Hello, this is LJ Bothell, and this is a Microsoft Excel video uh, to work a little bit on how you can group worksheets in a workbook and do a few tasks with those worksheets when they're grouped. Um, it's really simple to do. So what I'm working on is a file from the MS Excel Bootcamp. I'm not going to follow the exact steps in the book. Instead, I just want to show you some tips so you have this at your fingertips while you're working through the book and any other Excel work you want to do. So basically, this particular workbook has four worksheets in it. And what I would like to do is have all of the worksheets use the same uh, page size, page orientation, same margins, and have the same header and footer on them. So that's what we'll cover in here. First thing, in order to group worksheets, all you need to do is select one worksheet, hold down your shift key, and then press the uh, other worksheets, and now they're all grouped. And if you want to ungroup them, you just click on one of the uh, name tabs, and that will ungroup them. There is no way to sort of lock the group, so what you need to do is just make sure that they're grouped, and then whatever sheet you're on, you can use the various um, tabs, menus, and ribbons on it, and it will affect all the worksheets with the work that you do for things that can be done in group worksheets. There are some things you can't do. I can't come in here and have my changing of a column width or a row height affect all of the worksheets because that's a single worksheet tab. But what we can do is take a look at our margins. And what I'd like to do right now is see what the custom margins are. The custom margins are um, not too bad. Um, you could change these manually. And what we happen to be in, by the way, is a page setup panel, which is allows us to do things on the page, like change the orientation of it, change how magnified um, or focused the page is in terms of the size it will print out at. You may have it so one column is hanging off the edge of a sheet of paper, and you can make it 95% normal size for printing, and that would capture that. And as long as it's readable, that could be helpful to you. It happens to be letter-sized paper. We can look at the margins. We can look at the header and footer, which are currently empty. And we can look at the sheet area, which is mostly grayed out here because we have several sheets grouped together. So what I want to do is I'm going to click OK here and just come back to margins and I'm going to select narrow. I'm going to go to orientation, which determines whether the page is taller than it is wide. And I'm going to select landscape, which makes it a little um, less wide. I'm going to go ahead and um, zoom out a bit and I'm also going to change my page view from where it is at normal to page layout. And this is so that we can see that there are header and footer sections, which we'll touch on in a moment. But the third thing I want to do is I want to change the page size. As you can see here, right now we are on a fairly basic um, page size, and the table actually takes two pages to print out to capture all the columns. Changing the page size may or may not make a difference on this particular worksheet. We don't know. But overall, I would like to use legal size paper, which is 8.5 by 14. And that's pretty common in the workplace when you're going to be printing these things out. So now all four of the worksheets will have that. Have the same margins, same orientation, same size. Next, what I want to do is come over here and touch on the headers and footers. So I'll come over to the page layout sheet options group click this little box down in the lower right corner and get the page setup panel again. And I want to click header and footer. Now the header happens to be the area between the actual work, workbook and worksheet work area where you type in all your stuff and put your logos and your formulas and everything and the edge of the page. And it's actually a little space between the margin and the content of the document. So what we could do in here is we can add some text. Right now, it reads that there is no header content. We can make a custom header, or we can click this drop down and see what it offers us. And it gives us the chance to look at some various predetermined things that Excel has set up that are fairly common for folks. Like if they want to actually see the entire directory address of where the file is, which is awfully um, useful if you're in a department where several people are using it and they want to look at the document and figure out where to find it on the computer server in order to touch it up. 
or you can look and see what else you have here. It has my name, page one, date, prepared by, date, page one. That's actually very useful. I don't even need a footer if I put that on. But I'm going to come up here and I'm just going to put chapter 11 workbooks working dot xlsx. And that happens to be the name of the um, document itself. Now for the footer, there's nothing. And I'm going to go and put a custom footer in. And in this custom area, for both the footer and the header, they'll have a series of icons you can choose from. Strangely uh, enough, if you're inside of one of these areas, it won't um, pop up a little tooltip. But if you haven't started typing anything into any of the sections, then you can see. So if I were to type in my name, LJ Boffel here, I could use A to come up and make it so that it's 16 point bold. Okay. And then click away and then hover over. I have the ability to insert a page number, insert number of pages. So it could be like page umpty ump of umpty ump number of pages. I could insert the date, the time. I could insert the file path, which is where the document is on the computer or the server. The file name, like we did in the header. The sheet name, which may be very useful. I could insert a picture or an icon or something like that in here. Well, right now I'm going to come over to the right hand section and I'm going to type page space dash space. And then what I'd like to do is insert a page number. And I get this little piece of code, and this is often what happens with any of these icons up here, is Excel has a little bit of code written in there that it can put in that will become dynamic once the document is live and you're out of the header footer panel. What do I mean? I'm going to click OK, and then I'm going to say, okay, that's great for the header. This is great for the footer. I'm going to click OK. And now the header on every one of my pages should show Chapter 11 workbooks working.xlsx, that's the file I'm in. And if I scroll down to the bottom of the page, I should see my name on the left hand side and then scroll over so I can see page space dash space one. Page one, uh, let's see, page three, five, seven. And the reason it's going that way is because the page next to it happens to be the even numbered pages. So those are some basic things you could do to a document that um, is, or excuse me, a workbook that has the different worksheet documents in it grouped together. And when you're done with it, you can ungroup and go about your business of touching up each worksheet as you need to when you decide you're going to print it, if you want to print all of the columns, if you want to make the columns narrower, and do all those sorts of things at another time. So I hope this was helpful to you. Thank you very much.